There are two objectives for this final video. Number one, we want to clean up the query for how we're fetching the posts in the home fragment. And second, we want to add one more fragment, which is for showing all the posts made by the signed in user. And so right now, when we tap in profile, we're showing the same compose fragment, but we'd like to show a separate fragment showing Instagram posts. So first, cleaning up the query. So if you go back into the course portal, you'll notice that the user should be able to see the last 20 posts submitted to Instagram. And right now we're not doing any kind of filtering or limits on the query. So this is where we can exercise the real power of the parse API. So if you go into post fragment, here's where we're making the query. Limiting the number of objects that we get back is actually quite simple. All we need to do is say set limit and pass in 20. And the other thing that we'd like to do is the data that we got back now is randomly ordered. But when you open up Instagram or Twitter or really any app, you expect the most recent content at the top. So the way you can do that is you say query dot add descending order, and then you pass in a key here. We would like to pass in the time that the post was created as a way to order the elements. So what that means is the item that was created most recently, which has the uh, newest created at time, the highest created at time, that will come first and the oldest ones will come last, which is what we want. So the way to do this is if you go back into the parse dashboard, you'll remember that we have this column called created at. This is auto-generated for us by parse. And so we're going to copy the spelling and the name of this column and add that as um, an attribute on the post. So I'm going to go into here. We'll have created at as another key. And this spelling should match with the column here. So now that we've created this key, let's go back into post fragment and we'll say post created app. So if we run this one more time, now uh, we should see the post ordered. And what we can do is I can actually sort this by the created app date. So the most recent post now at the top, and you can see it's it should be a picture of bread followed by the hipster picture. So now if we open up the app, we do see bread at the top followed by the hipster picture. So that worked. The last thing I'd like to show is hooking up the profile fragment. So right now, if we go into the profile tab, then we are showing the dummy fragment, which is the compose fragment. Instead, we'd like to show Instagram posts made by the signed in user. There are a couple ways to do this. The naive way, one thought could be, uh, we have this post fragment, why don't we create another fragment called profile fragment, and we will basically copy over everything we have in post fragment. So we'll have the another recycler view, another adapter, and another layout, and so on. And that would work. But the issue there is that there's a lot of repeated code. If you really think about the difference between the home fragment and the profile, it's identical in terms of how it looks and feels. The only difference is how we are filtering the data. We're going to modify the query for how we get data out of parts. There is a better way to do this. The idea is we're going to use inheritance. We're going to create a new fragment called profile fragment, which is a subclass of posts fragment. So let me show you how that works. We'll go into new and we're going to create a new fragment, but instead of doing it the way we've been doing it through this interface, we're just going to create a new Java class and we'll call this profile fragment. And the key here is defining a superclass. So this will be posts fragment, and it should autocomplete for you. The benefit here is that all of the behavior and functionality and UI of post fragment, we're able to get access to in profile fragment. The only thing that we want to do differently, like we talked about, is update the query or modify the query. So instead of making this private, I'm going to make it protected. And now in profile fragment, if you start typing, query posts, you should be able to override that method. We'll copy over this query and everything will be the same, except the only thing we're going to update is having a query where equal to, and here we want to pass in the post key user. And we want to make sure that the user attribute of this post is equal to the currently signed in user. And that should be it. You'll notice that there is an error here because these member variables, all posts and adapter are private. So to fix that, we go back into posts fragment and make these both protected instead of private. Okay, so that error went away. So now we have profile fragment defined and you'll notice that it says 
class profile fragment is never used. Take this and go into main activity, which is where we have the bottom navigation view, which is responsible for creating these different fragments. So now we can get rid of that to do and put in the profile fragment. So if you run the app now, the currently signed in user is me, which is Rahul. And so what we expect is this first post by Baker should go away and we should only see, start to see posts by Rahul, by me. So if I go to profile, you can see that does happen. So we have uh, the hipster look by me, the panda, and then this is the one that we tested together using the emulator on our phone. And then going back into compose, you can see that that behavior is still intact where we allow the user to create a new Instagram post if they choose. And then similarly, going back into home. There's a ton that we covered in these walkthroughs. So if you have gotten stuck anywhere, I would highly encourage you to check out the hints tab. There's a lot of common mistakes and this will help you uh, to figure out where you went wrong and how to get back on track. As a review, what we've done so far is set up the parse server. So we're using Heroku, which manages the server, and then we're deploying software called Parse, which is a database as a service or a backend as a service. Next, we set up a project. So we defined a custom application class called Parse Application, which is where we put in all of the attributes for our application, such as app ID, master, secret key, um, and the server URL. And then third, we implemented all of the functionality. In particular, we introduced the idea of fragments. And so we only have one activity in our application and that acts as a navigation element between different fragments using the bottom navigation view. And we're able to also interact with the camera in order to be able to fire an implicit intent, get a file back, and then use that to upload that to parts. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and there's a lot of cool extensions that you could do at this point if you got stuck or have any questions, feel free to let us know and we'll help you as much as possible.